Hey you folks! So, I guess I'm all about checking out weird, not quite Game Boy, but Game Boys. Um, well, this is my favorite Nintendo! Uh, so, anyway. This is the Revo K101 Plus. Uh, this was sent to me, much like the um, Hyperkin Retron SQ that I just checked out. This was sent to me by a friend just because, you know, it's cool stuff. And you know he thought I, he thought I think it was cool. So this this wasn't provided to me by anyone. And like all my other videos, they're all. I don't want to say unbiased because everyone has a bias, but they're as neutral as can be. I'm not trying to sell anything. I don't get anything by selling these things. Um, but I I just like taking a look at cool stuff and sharing it. Anyway. Before I get too deep into this, this is the K101 Plus. You may have heard of the Revo K101 at some point, and regardless of your opinion on that, this is technically a new one. Um, I don't know. I don't know how this differs from the original K101 aside from different color scheme, but I do know it has been manufactured recently, which makes me wonder if it's still a. Uh, hardware clone of the Game Boy Advance. So anyway, in the box we got the Revo, we got a screwdriver, I guess they expect you to take it apart. Do yourself a favor and just throw this right in the fuck it bucket, you don't want to actually use that. Uh, you've got, thankfully, a USB cable because for some god awful reason in the year 2020 they decided to use mini USB. You've also got your video out cable which consists of mono audio and then composite video component shit I always get them confused it's the lower quality of the two and with a two and a half millimeter audio jack to plug it into and then it looks like we also have a screen protector indeed we do and those shitty little wipes I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use any of that. Nothing interesting in there. The box itself has nothing on it. The only thing on it was on the lid that you just saw. And then here is the device itself. The device in all its majesty. I'll set that aside. I'll play with that in a minute. Um, so on the back here, I don't. I don't actually have one of the original K101s, so I don't know how this is going to compare. I'm going to make some assumptions based off of what I remember seeing the old ones, but don't quote me on it and correct me if I'm wrong. But we have a new logo on the back, and uh, this serial number is not, I don't know, this doesn't make me hopeful. I know I'm not one of the first people to get this, especially since it came out last year and last year was hint at least four months ago um, and this is only unit 131 if that's how their serial numbers work which it probably is I mean, most companies use sequential serial numbers that's basically how that works um, but my curiosity is overwhelming me and I gotta see what kind of battery this thing uses maybe The screw long enough? Jesus. There's a little rubber foot there that makes me nervous. Alright, well maybe I'll have to get into this later. Oh, there it goes. Ah, so it's still using that Nokia BL5 battery. Um, apparently I have a genuine Nokia battery in this thing. Is there a date code on this? If there is, I'm not seeing it. I have no idea how old this battery is. Let's say ROP68E7. Yeah, I don't know what that is either. Yeah. No idea how old it is, but 
At the very least, it's a standard battery pack. We can replace it. All right, let's let's talk about the hardware of the device itself. First off, you got on the front here. You got your four face buttons. I don't know why there's a Y and an X since this is meant to be a Game Boy Advance player. Um, this just we just saw this on the Retron too. They have a Y and an X. I don't know what function they serve here. I'm guessing it's remappable, maybe, um, maybe turbo. I don't know. Either way, kind of weird. On the left here, you got your start and select, just like on an original Game Boy Advance, and your D-pad. And then on the top, L and R. And right in the middle here, we have a big old brightness button, just like on the SP. And also on the top, we have the charge port, the terrible mini USB, the AV out, which is that 2.5 millimeter jack, and then a link cable port. We will test that out at some point. On the right, we have volume controls. That's basically it. On the bottom, we have a headphone jack and a reset port. And the cart slot. More on this in a moment. And then on the left here, we have the power button. So, now it's time for that moment. Cart slot. Included is the Revo K card, which is not a flash card despite the fact that it has a micro SD in it. It's technically a flash card, okay. But it's also technically not a flash card. So if we pop this open, there we go. Take a look at the PCB they have in here. You will see a whopping nothing on this thing. It is a single layer board, absolutely nothing on the back, no traces, no ground planes, nothing. And then on the front we have the SD card slot run into a few of the data lines and that's basically it. Now again, this is not a flash card. If I were to plug this into anything other than a Revo, it won't, it won't read. There's nothing that, the only thing that this does, this is a dummy adapter for an SD card to plug into the cart slot on the bottom of this thing. An actual flash cart is significantly more complicated and I have an Easy Flash Omega here. You've seen, taken one of these apart before. There's all these big dedicated ICs on the thing plenty of parts, so on and so forth. But all this is, like I said, it's just a physical interface for an SD card into the player itself. And then we have the cart slot. Now, my understanding is there's no physical lockout for Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, but it still does not read them. We'll test that in a moment. But it does read Game Boy Advance games. So that's what that card slot is for. I mean, should be pretty obvious. Let's see if it has any charge. It does! Look at that! Goes right into that Game Boy screen, tries to boot up. Of course, it's not going to go anywhere because there's nothing inserted. So let's let's actually try this first. This is this is the burning question. I want to see if this thing is actually a hardware clone. Or, or what? Let's see if it has multi boot. It already has the Game Boy logo, which means they're they're doing some nefarious things. But uh, which means this is not Nintendo approved. Unfortunately, it does not have the little cutouts for me to actually plug this in the proper way. But the easy way is to just literally remove it. Jam it in there. You gotta hold that for a long time. Hmm. No multi boot. 
Oh, there it goes. It just, it's, it's my thingy. Thingy wasn't working right. So there you go. It has multi-boot and a working link port. Two birds, one stone. That is actually ridiculously cool. Because that means that this thing should be able to link up with any other Game Boy Advance. Uh, you know, you want to play Pokemon, you can trade your Pokemans. You want to play Mario Kart, you can race your Mario Kart. You know, if you actually have friends and actually go outside and you don't own Mario Kart, but your friend does, you can still play multiplayer with them. That alone actually makes this really interesting, I think. Let's see what happens when we boot with the K card. I'm guessing there is something on the PCB that this thing detects so that it boots off of internal memory instead of the um, Game Boy Advance BIOS. That's an awful noise. Oh, and look at that. It comes with Mario Kart. Well, I guess we'll, we'll try that out. Boots into the game. I have no idea how that works, but I think it's pretty neat. You can pop the SD card out, put your own ROMs on there. It's not too big a deal. Uh, but the fact that it's running off of an SD card means that this thing has an internal flash card, or it's using emulation. Based on when this thing came out and previous teardowns of this thing, and the fact that it says it's a hardware clone, I'm guessing it's the former, and it is an internal flash card, and not emulation. But seems to work alright. I'm not a big Mario 3 person. I am more familiar with Mario World. So please excuse any sloppy playing. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Oh well. I know I've already messed up several times over. Oh, yeah, I'm done with that. <laughs> uh, let me test it on Super Mario World. This is, this is a game I'm familiar with and comfortable with. And unlike the Retron, it actually read my save. Oh, but I want, I don't want to save. I want to start a new game. Even though it actually read my save, I want to actually start a new game because I always test these things on the same level. I might as well keep going on that same level. Yes, 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 yes. I don't think the background's supposed to be that color. I don't remember it, it being black. I remember it being blue. I mean, it certainly plays fine. call it a clone if it's not, you know, if it's got problems. I mean, I guess you can still call it a clone. Just somewhat misleading.
Yeah, I mean, certainly plays fine. I got no problems with that. I gotta, I gotta see though. This is gonna drive me crazy. This is, of course, a legitimate Game Boy Advance, despite how it looks. Technically more of an SP, I guess. Yeah, see, blue sky. I'm not crazy. All right, so of course the first game I pick up has some weird quirks. Um, Let's try more weird games, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. This thing doesn't seem to work on anything except for basically unmodified Game Boys. Um... I mean, okay, no, I'm sorry. It'll work on a modified Game Boy. I just mean that if there's anything that messes with the clock signal on the Game Boy, it won't, it'll fail to read the card. I don't know what it is specifically. I'm guessing they're, I, I can't even guess, actually. I don't know. Uh, so, like, if you have a GBA HD console, try booting one of these. It just doesn't work. If you have a consoleizer, try booting one of these. It doesn't work. I mean, it'll work on a backlit Game Boy. Just thought that was thought that it was kind of interesting. Let's see if it works on that. I doubt it does, but I gotta know. Yeah, it does not. Basically, it's like a giant Game Boy Micro. Let us try. Yeah, I don't see why that wouldn't work. But of course it boots into Advance Wars because I have it in mode B. This is an Omega Definitive Edition. Expect mode B to work with just about everything. I think it'll be more interesting if mode A works. But really, I wanted to run the 240p test suite on this. Let's see the grid. We got the full screen there. And you already see here. Here's what I wanted to see. I thought it looked kind of funny, but I couldn't quite tell, and I didn't want to say anything until I could prove it. That is supposed to be a circle, not an oval. This screen is the wrong aspect ratio. This is a four to three aspect ratio screen, not a three to two like it should be. was another test I wanted to do and I cannot for the life of me remember which one it is. Well, shoot. Nonetheless, I wonder if this is a 320 by 240 screen then. It is much sharper than I expected for a screen that's not quite the correct resolution. Which makes me real curious, real curious in how they're doing that. All right, let's try. Yet another card. 
I'll try my aging cart. Oh, so these are mapped to LNR. Okay. And then so are LNR. Nice thing is the D-pad does not allow simultaneous opposing inputs exactly like it should. And all the buttons work exactly like they should. Now let's try one more interesting thing and see if it passes the aging ROM test. If it does, this thing is a quality clone. I can already tell that it did not pass, which kind of makes sense. Uh, in fact, the ROM actually crashed. That is by far the worst result I've ever seen. Um, of course, a legitimate Game Boy is going to pass this test perfectly fine. Flying colors, no problems whatsoever. Emulators can run the ROM, but they will fail some of the tests. Uh, you'll get like one X on the memory or one X on the LCD or both or timer or DMA. W one of these will give you trouble, but it still runs. Whereas on this thing, just straight up crashes. Yep, same step. So despite their claims of using actual Nintendo Silicon, actual GBA CPUs, which I thought were kind of bullshit, um, I believe I've just proved that that is indeed bullshit. I mean, all that looks good, though. I will say, it plays surprisingly well. Um, for the price of this thing, I did look it up and I couldn't find anywhere to buy them. Because of course not. Uh, not without like going through the CD under depths of Taobao. But they're about 70 bucks. And for that price, I think it's real hard to complain. Even with the... Uh, even with my complaints on the LCD, it is better than most, but it's not perfect. All right, so before I move on to pulling this thing apart and seeing what makes it tick, I wanna do one more thing. I'm gonna pop Pokemon Emerald in here, which should work fine. Let's see why I wouldn't. Uh, but what we're gonna use this test, what we're gonna use this game for is to check how the LCD is doing its scaling. Wow, why did I reach up there? It's down here. Anyway, I am very familiar with this game in particular. So what I want to do now is I want to take a close-up photo of this screen and then we'll take a look at the scaling and we can, we can compare it to some of the others. I'll be right back. All right, so I actually found something pretty neat uh, I went ahead and compared it to this SP, which is using a Funny Playing Backlight Kit. Uh, and what's special about the Funny Playing Backlight Kit is it is exactly four times the resolution of the original Game Boy. Plus or minus a little, but it's pillar boxed. Uh, so what that means is it uses integer scaling to make the uh, original Game Boy pixels uh, one original Game Boy Pixel is being represented by four pixels on this new screen. Exactly four, which gives you a nice, crisp, uh, stock Game Boy-like appearance. This thing's doing it a little bit differently. It does not look bad. It really doesn't. It looks a little bit fuzzy, but it is shockingly close. So let's look at what we're seeing here. This is a close-up of the uh, funny playing screen. Uh, this is right on Ethan's face there. 
Uh, he was facing down when I took the picture like that. And you can see his dead, lifeless eyes. You can see how uh, you know each one of these pixels is these little three lights here. That's a green or a blue light, a green light, and a red light. Black is represented by having all three of those off. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight representing one of his eyes. On a normal Game Boy Advance, that there would just be two instead of eight. There would be one and then two. But if we look at the Revo, we've got something completely different. This thing uses a completely different sub-pixel grid array. Uh, I don't... I, I, I just... I don't know how to interpret it. It's not quite the same. You can see we have one, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, five, six, making up his eye. Like it's, it's weird. You can see the green and the blue subpixel are slightly on when they should be completely off. You, you, you see what I mean? It's not quite it's not one to one, or even one to two for that matter. It's somewhere in between. But because of the strange orientation of the subpixel array, it doesn't actually look that bad. It's definitely strange. It, it, I don't. It, it's closer to like a one point two five scale. It looks like to me, because the uh, horizontal pixels look one-to-one, -one, but the vertical pixels, it's not quite one-to-one. -one. In-game, I mean, unless you look close, it does look mostly fine. The most telling issue, the biggest problem that I see, let me turn that off, I don't need it anymore, is literally just that the aspect ratio is different. You can see that these have just about the same height, but this one's not as wide as it should be. It's close enough that until I put them side by side, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but it's still, it, it's not right. So unfortunately that results in a little bit of judder because there is some weird scaling. So if we look at this sign, when I'm running around, you can see it kind of flickers. It should not be flickering. Completely forgot to test this brightness. I guess it goes all the way off. Is it even usable when it's all the way off? I mean, I guess the screen is still on, but... I'm not going to get very far with that. Let's see if it uh, remembers brightness settings. It does not. That's unfortunate. Even backlight kits in 2021 do. All right. I'll turn that off. I think it's time to take it apart. I gotta know. I'm sure at least one of you guys ought to got to know too. Luckily these pads come out shockingly easily. I don't think we need to remove this one. It's not coming out easily, so I'm not going to even try. So my screwdriver, there it is. Ooh, that was dangerous. I had the tray wing in there still. Try point. So I am fully expecting to see some vaguely Game Boy Advance shape CPU shaped IC 
<clears throat> I see in here, uh, but that is not quite an I see. I'm expecting to see something else on the cart bus that looks almost like a few other ICs as well to manage the uh, internal flash cart. Beyond that, I don't know what else I'm expecting. Looks like the screws are all the same size except for the battery cover screw. Even that one in the cart slot, same size. And just plastic clips holding it together once you got the screws out. horrifying noise, but it seemed to come apart. Oh, and we're not even that lucky. We just have one massive blob of epoxy. Oh, that's a shame. That is a darn shame. Now I can't confirm my suspicions. So yeah, this thing calls itself a hardware clone. I don't I don't think that's accurate. I think it's not quite an emulator either. I think it's somewhere in between. I think I think it's a hardware emulator. This is this is actually apologies, camera cut off, wasn't paying attention, cut me off mid thought. Um anyway, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. This thing is basically a a, a prototype analog pocket. Now, don't don't misunderstand me. This is not an FPGA. Uh, this is not made by analog. This is a much older device. This is using custom silicon. Uh, this is using an ASIC. But it works in basically an identical fashion. Um, I got the screws out. Right, so this should lift out. Maybe. I don't know how the screen's connected, so I don't know how that's going to come up. Okay. Oh. That's how the screen's connected. Interesting to see spring contacts on a speaker. Looks like it uses those same generic membranes that the uh, Andronic devices use doesn't use a spring, it just uses the flexibility of plastic to uh, give it a little bit of a spring. Now, I don't want to dive too deep into this because I don't want to break it, but this screen seems pretty, pretty well attached. But, there you go. I did look up some teardown photos because I was afraid of something like this happening. And under here there are two memory chips. Uh, let me pull it up. That is the wrong browser window. There it is. Oh, but it's so small. I can't read them, but there's one here and then one here. Uh, but there you go. Nothing, 
Nothing too interesting. Are these? I can't tell if these are. Because they don't have my lights on. These are carbon contacts. So they should be nice and responsive. Though I think I would prefer gold plated contacts. Not for no reason, um, but gold plated contacts. You know, I don't actually know if they last longer or anything like that. I just know that Nintendo uses gold plated contacts in their portables, and it's probably for a good reason. As opposed to the carbon contacts, which I believe the specific issue. Oh god, I may have just ruined one of the shoulder buttons. I wasn't paying attention, and the nubbin started coming out. Um, I believe the reason that carbon contacts are used over gold is because the carbon contacts are just cheaper to surface plate than gold is. But gold is likely more resistant to uh, wear over time and or water damage which a portable might see a lot of. So yeah, this is uh, fairly certain it's a hardware clone, or not, god, not a hardware clone. Um, I'm fairly certain they reverse engineered what they could from the Game Boy Advance, and then built their own custom silicon. I just spend the whole darn video talking about how it's not a hardware clone, and then I call it a hardware clone without even thinking about it. No. It's not a hardware clone. It's similar, but not quite. The problem with calling it a hardware clone is you assume it works better than it actually does. And this thing does work pretty nicely, but it's definitely got issues. At least it, like, disassembles and goes back together pretty cleanly. I also did more research on this while I was waiting for the uh, free space to reappear on my phone. And this is not a new device. I believe I said earlier in the video that this is new to 2020. I don't think that's true. I think perhaps someone started remanufacturing this. Or at least they never stopped manufacturing these. I don't know. But either way, as far as I can tell, this is basically identical to the uh, original version that came out... Was it 2012? I don't know. Ages ago. This thing is as old as a Game Boy was. This thing is as old now as a Game Boy was when this thing came out. So if it came out in 2012, the last Game Boy released was in 2005, Game Boy Micro. Uh, or 2006 if you really want to count the Visteon, but... Eh, it's kind of unfair. Um, so if this thing came out in 2012, last Game Boy was in 2005, that makes it seven years old. Or that makes the Game Boy seven years old when this came out. 
This came out in 2012. It is now 2021. Makes it nine years old. So this thing is older than the Game Boy was when this thing came out. Need how time do that though. Okay. Let's make sure I didn't break anything. I think I broke something. That's unfortunate. Well, that's an anticlimactic end to this. Uh, let us double check by trying to charge it. Because perhaps it is just dead. I don't know how long this thing was sitting in the box, and I sure as hell didn't charge it when I got it. There's a faint orange light. Yeah, there we go. Must have just been dead. I'm fairly certain this thing supports play and charge. I don't see why it wouldn't. But then again... Very well might not. Come on. Come on. See, it's, it's the text that looks off. You can see it's, it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy. I don't like fuzzy. Anyway, so get on with it. I've been rambling for over an hour. This thing is super neat, and if you can find one for cheap, I think it's worth grabbing to ha just, just to have one in your collection. It is a super neat piece of Game Boy history, even if we ignore the fact that it's not quite a Game Boy and the compatibility isn't actually it isn't that great. Uh, I don't know what else might not work on this, but the fact that ugh, the fact that my like, the second game I tried, the fact that the second game I tried had a very obvious visual glitch, I think should be an indication that quite a few games are going to have issues. Ugh. I hate these stupid wizards. I also shouldn't grab those coins, but oh well. So, if you want one of these for actual playing, you know what? It's perfectly fine. It is way more playable than uh, some of the other devices that have crossed my desk. <clears throat> the uh, other Anbernic devices that I've checked out recently, like the RG350, and RG351. I'd say for Game Boy Advance specifically, this is far more playable than the RG350 is. The screen resolution is just significant, it's just heaps better. I can see a slight problem with, um, you know, the game compatibility. Perhaps it's not the best. Unfortunately, the RG350 is going to beat this one there. Not even just Game Boy Advance problems, but the RG350 plays so many more systems, including Game Boy Color, and so on. But I mean, you, you can you can see it's running running fantastic. I don't remember how to do this guy. That's not how you do it, though. That's for sure. Oh, we gotta. That's right. We gotta get the unique one. Ooh. 
Ooh, that was close. And he falls into the lava, you kill him, you murder him, and then you take his castle. See, the background on that doesn't look right either, but I am also in a cave, so... If the only bugs are glitchy backgrounds in some games, then fuck, you know, I'll take it. It's perfectly fine. Have you found the red and green switches yet? Uh-oh. I missed a secret. There's a secret in this level. I'll have to come back and get it. Anyway. That's enough of that. Um, I like this thing. I don't necessarily recommend like tracking it down and paying more than like 70 bucks or so because that's what they're supposed to sell for. It's cool. It's not that cool. If you want to actually play, if you want a really good experience, get one of these things. Um, unfortunately, the only thing this has over this is this one doesn't have a cart slot. Aside from the lack of a cart slot, this one is better in every other way. Even the screen. Bigger, proper aspect ratio, proper resolution. This is a good device. It's also about the same size. But yeah, I hope that was interesting. I'm sorry, I know I rambled. Uh, if I find a seller, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, if I can find a seller that looks pretty trustworthy, I will link it below. I'll, I'll, actually, I'll probably ask my friend where he got these and just share his link. It's probably going to be a Taobao link, but it is what it is. Yeah, neat stuff. Thanks for watching. Fantastic thing.